In this episode, I'm going to introduce you to the CNC Mill One. It's a $399 kit plus the cost of the router. And this was donated to the channel for me to review. I'm going to give you my first impressions right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products. This video is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. I opened up the box and here is the kit of parts. It took about three to four hours to put this together. Many of the parts were 3D printed and frankly they weren't the best quality. Now it is all open source so you can reprint them yourself. But here's an example. It's kind of rough. You can see the layers and this one did not line up with the hole. It was cocking the whole mechanism which was messing things up so I had to actually drill out the hole and make it fit. Now I could have reprinted this but the dimensions would probably still be off. I don't know. So I just drilled it out and that seemed to work. So that was probably the biggest hassle I had with this thing. Now the other thing, it came with anti-backslash nuts and there was nothing in the instructions about how to put these together but I've used these before so it wasn't a problem. I think this was an option. I don't know if it still is but I got those in place, got everything together and here it is. Now I had to move the mechanisms and grease everything so it would move easy but once I got that done I was ready to move to the electronics. The electronics consists of an Arduino Uno with a CNC shield with Pololu A4988 stepper drivers. Very similar to what you see in the 3D printer. You do have to load the firmware into the Arduino. They give you all the files to download and they give you instructions step by step really well done on how to do it. So if you've never done an Arduino you should have no problem. If you have done an Arduino it should be a piece of cake. Everything worked fine for me. I was communicating with it. Everything was set. I just needed to install the 24 volt supply, plug it into the shield so it would drive the motors and that's when this happened. I saw some smoke and then I heard a pop and the microcontroller actually exploded in my setup. Now I've seen this before. This isn't the first microcontroller I've blown up but I knew it was probably related to high voltage on one of the I.O. pins. That's typically what will do it. I.O. pins should never see more than 5 volts. So this told me that 24 volts probably snuck in there somehow. So I did a probing of the shield and sure enough there was a short in the shield sending 24 volts to digital pin 7. And that's what caused the problem. I contacted CNC and they immediately sent me new electronics. This worked fine. I was able to move the motor so I was ready to start my first project. There are many software options to control an Arduino based CNC machine and my favorite is Easel. Now Easel isn't really set up to do any CNC but it doesn't stop you either. So I just went through their setup menu and chose Shape Oco and then just selected some basic options that match the machine. And once I got this done then I could test out the motors and make sure that easel could control it. Well they give you this control panel where you can control the x-axis so I did that got the x-axis moving back and forth then I tried the y-axis the y-axis was moving smoothly I had a little bit of grease here and there to make sure those move smoothly but it worked fine then I did the z-axis and that was working good so I was ready to say this was set up and continue on to the next step so I clicked yes for all of them I told them I'm going to do manual control of the router I don't have homing on this and I don't have a Z probe so I just said no to all that and Easel said you're good you're set up but I had to go back and fix something in the setup and that was to manually correct the size because the bed size of this print this CNC is actually quite small so I went back and set it to the X direction of 250 millimeters and the Y direction of 200 that's the cut area so once I had that in Easel now I could see what I was working with and I decided to do just a simple design. It's this smiley face here. And I went up to icons with an easel and selected that. It's just a, you know, a SVG file basically that it comes in and you can resize it, you can reshape it like I'm showing you here until you get to the size that you want. I made mine not, not huge, big enough. I just wanted a quick cut. So once you've got whatever your image is, now you can set the depth of each cut. So each one is individually set here. So here's the eyes. I set everything to two millimeter deep cut. The mouth is separate and then the outer circle is separate as well. So I set all those at two millimeter depth and a fill so it would cut out the whole material, not just an outline. And then it shows me in the preview what it's going to look like. 
Easel has a simulation feature built in and this is kind of nice just like a 3D print slicer that shows you the layer lines I can slide through this thing and check how it's going to cut the actual CNC project so it shows it's going to cut the left eye first then the mouth then the outer ring and then it's going to finish off by cutting the right eye so this is a great way to just make sure everything looks right before you actually cut the wood the bed itself is just as big as the cutting area to me it should be wider there's space for it so there's room to clamp things down they say to use some spring-loaded clamps like I did here or double-sided tape. I really don't like the double-sided tape idea, but this worked fine. They also included these 60-degree cutting bits, which are perfect for cutting circuit boards, which I plan to use this machine for. I think they included that in mine. I don't think that's standard. I used one of those 60-degree bits in this, so it's not going to be the perfect cut. But then I stepped through the menu to launch a project in uh, Easel. I chose a, the smallest bit, a 132nd. And then I went through the steps and finally said raise the bit, turn the spindle on, which I manually did. And I said the spindle is on. You click on the carve button and this thing starts cutting. Now here's a time lapse of it. You can see it's following the simulation, cutting the left eye, then the mouth, then the outer circle. And then it's going to cut the right eye as the final step. And the router is really, really strong. So it cut through this like butter. And it did a great job. The cut is a little bit rough because of the bit I used. I didn't sand this or nothing, but I was happy to see that the circles are perfectly round. So all the X, Y, and Z movement is working good. So now I'm ready to cut some circuit boards, but I'm going to save that for a future video. But overall, I'd say this thing took me a little while to get here, but it worked good once I did. Well, for about the cost of a low-cost 3D printer, you can get a CNC machine. It does take some time to put together, and I, you know, as you know, I had some issues. But overall, I can recommend this. I'm happy with the results I'm getting now. I wish the bed was a little bit bigger. I may make my own bed for this. It's got space, but I love the fact that I can just pick it up and store it away and then bring it out on my bench later. It's perfect for cutting circuit boards or small little plaques, and it's a great introduction to CNC. And the fact that I can use this with easel, two thumbs up, because I love using that software. It's like the Tinkercad of CNC. That's it for this episode. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of these other CNC project videos. If you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month Patreon is always appreciated. And if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time.